In today's video, first we're gonna learn why Ainsoft Matrix is the most popular strategy tool. Then, we will take a look at the strategies of McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Apple, and Starbucks. Let's get started. So what is the Ainsoft Matrix? There are two major areas of concern in this matrix, the product and the market. The word market most of the time represents customers. Let's now see how multinational brands use the Ainsoft Matrix. McDonald's To attract more customers in the same market, McDonald's launched their mobile application with features for delivery, discounts, and rewards. Moreover, to entice price-conscious customers, they consistently offer affordable meals through their value meal menu. Product development is very common in the fast food industry, and McDonald's often experiments with new tastes and flavors. The company recently launched a plant-based burger to increase the availability of healthy meals and to reduce beef consumption. McDonald's continues to develop menus specific to the country in which it's located. Despite McDonald's presence in more than 120 countries, their market development strategy targets specific segments of the market. In order to attract young consumers, they introduced the BTS meal, which was very successful all around the world. Additionally, they offer family-sized menus to cater to large groups. Furthermore, McDonald's partners with food delivery services like Grab and Food Panda. In this way, they not only offer their products to different consumer groups, but also easily deliver the orders where McDelivery doesn't exist. To diversify its portfolio, McDonald's recently introduced McCafe. Here, they offer baked goods in addition to the items they were known for. It was established to compete with Starbucks and other coffee shops. Now, let's see what Starbucks is up to. Starbucks has successfully conducted market penetration strategy around the globe, and even the pandemic could not stop them. Starbucks offers discounts continuously, especially to members of its loyalty program. Besides discounts, they also offer loyalty points. It was this strategy that attracted people to purchase Starbucks coffee more often. During the pandemic, Starbucks introduced its curbside service and pickup service to reach more customers. With the help of the strong brand image, Starbucks also adopted product development strategies. Their menu has recently expanded to include plant-based items and non-dairy drinks. Starbucks also pioneered the Coffee to Go Traveler Kit. It's ready to drink coffee in a portable carrier that can hold up to 12 cups of brewed coffee. This can be enjoyed at home, at work, or while traveling. Starbucks keeps growing thanks to its marketing development strategies. They're now available on delivery platforms such as GrabFood and Food Panda. A cup of fresh coffee delivered to your doorstep. Their coffee beans and other merchandising items are now available on online retailers such as Shopee. For non-coffee drinkers, Starbucks also offers alternative drinks. Instead of diversifying products related to coffee or food, Starbucks diversification strategy was focused on partnering with merchandising brands. Partnerships have been established with Starbucks and Fila, as well as the popular travel bag Herschel. The Starbucks logo is now printed on Fila and Herschel bags and pouches. From coffee, now let's move to the soft drink category. Coca-Cola continues to penetrate the beverage market through offering bundled products, different sizes, and organizing contests. They focus on expanding their presence while catering to the needs of their market. As a major player in the beverage industry, Coca-Cola carries out their product development strategy by continuously creating flavored cola drinks, energy drinks, caffeine-based cola drinks, and new packaging formats. Each variant offers exciting taste and benefits to customers aside from their well-known flavor. In their market development strategy, Coca-Cola's focus was more on partnerships with other brands by offering bundled menus. In order to grow the market share, Coca-Cola also incorporated local flavors into their brand. Finally, in order to appeal to the social media generation, they have customized bottles with specific names. This strategy is not only buzzworthy, but also creates a unique relationship between Coca-Cola and its customers. Like Starbucks, Coca-Cola's strategy for diversification is to incorporate their brand into various merchandising items. They make a variety of products by placing their brands on different items such as apparels, watches, tumblers, and so on. Changing gears from the beverage industry, let's explore Apple's Ainsoft Matrix. 
In order to penetrate the market, Apple employs discounts, special deals and installment plans. Apple has been a technology leader for many years. The brand is consistently introducing new devices, new accessories as well as new features. The marketing development strategies of Apple are focused on partnering with retailers and telecommunication operators in each country. These operators offer data plans along with Apple's iPhone and iPad. As a technology trendsetter, it's no wonder that Apple's diversification strategy is smoothly offered to its customers. In addition to the upcoming Apple Car and Apple AR glasses, Apple is currently offering different services such as Apple TV and Apple Wallet to satisfy customers' needs while promoting the Apple products. Now that you have seen the aims of Matrix from the four companies, are you ready to construct your own? This matrix was designed by the mathematician and business manager Harry Igor Ansov. It's for this reason he's called the father of strategic management. Ansov matrix was first introduced in Harvard Business Review in 1957 in an article titled Strategies for Diversification. Again, the aim of the Ansov matrix is to grow sales, so it's also known as the most famous sales growth strategy. Now, let's explain each quadrant of the matrix. For this example, we will also presume that we represent the marketing team of a toothpaste maker and try to develop Ansov matrix for the brand. Okay. We first start with the market penetration strategy, as it's a low risk and a low cost approach. The idea here is to sell more of the existing toothpaste to the current customers or people who are very similar to the current customers. In this way, we expand our market share by capturing new customers and the competitors' customers. We can increase the market penetration by adjusting our marketing mix, such as pricing of products, offering promotions, or offering a loyalty scheme. We can also try to make the same customers buy more. Although it's unethical, many toothpaste commercials show the user adding so much toothpaste to increase the purchase frequency. Market penetration has a small risk, but it also offers small growth opportunities due to price discounts and promotional expenses. For our toothpaste, we can educate customers about the benefits of brushing more than one time a day or using more amount of toothpaste. Next, sometimes the market conditions do not favor the market penetration strategy, especially in categories where there is tough competition. In that case, we have to consider a product development strategy. As part of the product development strategy, we can try to increase sales by introducing new or improved toothpaste targeted to our current customers or similar customers. For this strategy to be effective, we must conduct a detailed study on unmet customer needs. We then use our resources for additional research and product development. This strategy has a moderate risk. Although the company is introducing a new product, the advantage is that it already knows the market. Some risks arise from hiring people investing in new technology and causing delays. These risks obviously may slow company growth as well. As a product development strategy, we can choose to sell new toothpaste with caffeine, CBD, or quick whitening chemicals. The next option is the market development strategy. In this approach, an existing product is sold in a new market. The new market can be geographically different or it can be a new market segment as well. Minor changes in the product can be made to adapt to new markets in this strategy. Additionally, the company must adjust its distribution channels as it attempts to enter new markets. Another approach is by using a new pricing model to appeal to different customer groups. Some common risks are extra market expenses and the risk of alienating our current customers. For our toothpaste example, we can try to sell our toothpaste in other countries and try B2B sales plans for schools and companies and kindergartens. Lastly, diversification strategy. This strategy is very common to startup companies when they want to pivot. In this way, we develop new products and sell them to different types of consumers in new markets. Diversification can also be achieved by merging or acquiring suppliers or supplementary products. Among the four strategies, 
Diversification presents the greatest risk of failure because many unknowns are involved. But if done properly, it offers the greatest potential for growth. There are various risks such as capital issues and supply chain management problems. Therefore, it's better to conduct trial runs with fictional products to see how consumers think about your new ideas. For our toothpaste brand, we can diversify our portfolio by incorporating mint for our toothpaste. Here are some questions for you to consider when establishing your of matrix. For market penetration, how can we make the same customers buy more? How can we advertise more efficiently? How can we promote more efficiently? For development, what are our customers' unanswered needs? What are their pain points? What is the easiest way to add variety to our products or improve the product? For market development, can we use new distribution channels? Which consumer groups are we ignoring? Can we sell the same product in different locations? And for diversity, Diversification. What else can we launch by using existing knowledge? How can we grow vertically, such as by buying our suppliers? How can we grow horizontally, such as buying our competitors or complementary services? Let's sum up. In today's conclusion, Insof Matrix is the most popular strategy framework in business. Insof Matrix emphasizes the low risk of current products and the current markets and the high risk of selling new products in the new markets. We can easily increase the sales of any company by using the four quadrants of the Ainsoft matrix. I hope you enjoyed this video. To learn more about marketing, innovation and creativity, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like and share our video. Thank you so much.